Hey, welcome everybody to the Daily Mastermind. I'm Paul Baxter, Implementation Coach for the Mortgage Mastermind Group. And today is Monday, Open Discussion Day. Open Discussion is, uh, that means any question is fair game. Just type your question into the question box. It'll pop open on my screen. I'll read it aloud so everybody on the class can follow along and we're all on the same page as far as what we're discussing at that particular time. And I'll answer the question as best as I can. If you post a question that I don't know the answer to, I will let you know up front, hey, I don't know the answer, but I'll follow that up every time with, but let's find out. So that being said, the question box is open. I don't have any questions in the box right now, so it is wide open to uh, any of you that would like to discuss anything that you're working on. Um, so I, I know, Jeff, you're working on a lot of Facebook ads, so if, um, if you'd like, we can kind of dive in and look at some of the reports. I know we can't dive into yours specifically, and we're going to do that later on this afternoon, you and I specifically, but we can kind of get a good background and dive into some of that. Um, I know some of you had commented last week when we were talking about the different presentation types that that's the goal for you. That's one of the focuses for your 2015 business plan. And so any, any questions you've got that we haven't covered yet as far as a follow-up plan for your presentations, what kind of presentations to do. Um, presentations that you've already got access to PowerPoints that you simply just need to edit and make your own that would be that would brand you as an expert uh, to your people are all fair game. Um, and so I don't have any questions now, but go ahead and post those as you get them. Um, and, and until then, I'll just kind of lead the class a little bit. Some of the things that kind of popped into my mind as I was preparing and thinking about today's open discussion, things that you guys would want to talk about, things like presentations you know that's that's what we're talking about and and what I want to be our focus for the month of December because I want you guys to hit the new year with the ability to get out there and really get in front of a larger group of people you know the reality is is the more one-on-one -on -one opportunity the more face-to-face -face opportunities that you have the more opportunities to ask for business that you'll get the more opportunities that you ask for business well, that only leads to the more opportunity, the more times that you're going to hear a referral or hear yes in terms of an answer when you're selling yourself. And so it's important that we focus our efforts on ways that are going to get us those face-to-face -face and those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, whether it be uh, marketing to referral partners. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly that if you want to have a recession-proof mortgage business, you have to have a a certain number and whatever that number is is based on your why and you, we've discussed that before um, how to how to get to your why but your your number of referral partners is based on your why but you have to have a certain number of referral partners to have that recession proof mortgage business because we're in a we're in a market right now that there are buyers for homes there are people listing their homes, the inventory is lower than the number of buyers, but there's a lot of purchase activity going on. 87%, and that's the last statistic I saw, that may be different this year, we'll find out in the next few months as statistics start to come out on, on year, on, you know, the yearly statistics come out, but 87% of people who are in the market to buy a home believe that they need to contact a real estate agent as part of the first pieces of the process. The first thing they do, 94% get online. Step two for 87% of that 94% is to contact a real estate agent. Well, guys, that, that, that means that you, the loan officer, are being contacted later. You're, you're an afterthought. And, and that's not to say that what we do isn't important. And the reality of it is, I know as well as you do, that, that the best way to go about purchasing a home is to contact the loan officer first, find out what your buying power, what do I qualify for, get me pre-qualified so I know exactly what my buying power is, and then I can focus my home buying efforts or my home searching efforts on homes that fit within my buying power. It only makes sense. Unfortunately, the general public believes find the house first, then figure out how to, how to finance it or pay for it. That means that we as loan officers, we have, whether we like them, whether it's fun, you know, whether we like it or not, we have to have real estate agents referring us business or referring those people to, uh, to us 
so that when they do try to figure out how to pay for it or finance it, that we're the person that they're calling on. And that happens through referral partnerships. And there's lots of ways to do it, but I have found in just my observations and watching and looking and seeing that presenting something, that being providing the real estate agents with some type of value in a way that you are the one that's giving them that value. Um, you all know our good friend Alan. He does it with his appreciation marketing. That's that's how he that's how he kind of gets into into their pocket or into their space or brands himself as that expert. He's now doing some new stuff with the mobile voice routing and adding that to the repertoire. He does it on a one-on-one. -on -one. He does it with small groups. He does it with large groups. The point is, is he's it's a presentation, guys. That's not just him having a one-on-one -on -one meeting. That's a presentation, and those are that's the way that you get those agents to see you as somebody different, to get them to see you as somebody that can help them in their business, and that's what it's really all about is giving you that opportunity. You know, anything that you do marketing wise, you guys have heard me say this. I've talked, I've said it a thousand times, and it bears repeating because it's important to make sure that you remember this. And I, and I lost my train of thought, so I can't remember what it is I was getting ready to say. Doggone it, I lost my train of thought on that. Um, people buy based on how you make them feel. And when you're doing presentations, what you're doing is you're instilling a feeling that you are an expert in something, that you know more about something, and you're willing to give that information. You're presenting something to them that is intended to help them in their business. That creates a feeling. You know, that's what it's all about. But but that's just the first step. I mean, what you've really got to do is you've got to develop the relationship. That first step of creating that feeling, all that does is give you an opportunity. And this is where my train of thought was going and what I've said a hundred times. All that is all that any marketing that you do does is give you an opportunity an opportunity to develop a relationship because without the relationship of any sort, yeah, you may get one here and six months later another one from a producer that's doing five transactions a month but the, or, or 10 transactions or 20 transactions a year or whatever the case may be, but the reality of the matter is is if you would develop that relationship further, you know, get face to face, ask them about their family, talk to them as if they're a real person, create a friendship. You know, I call it a relationship. You're looking to create a friendship, and once you create that, now you're in the beginnings of creating a true referral partner relationship. Yes, you've got to be able to do the loan part of it. You can't just rely on the fact that you're a cool guy or a cool girl and that people like you and you've developed these friendships because if they do refer you business, you've developed that relationship enough to where they refer you business, you absolutely have to be able to get the loan part done efficiently and in a manner that makes them feel as if you've got their best interest and their client's best interest at heart. You've got to be able to take care of the loan side. I believe that everybody on this call with us today has the processes in place to take care of the loan side efficiently. And and I talk to a lot of you on one-on-one on -on -one basis and some of you not, not as often, but I typically know and, and have conversations with folks and I know when, when the, the process isn't working the right way. And if that's the case, if your process isn't up to par, if you're not confident in your process to be able to close the deals in a timely fashion when you say they're going to be closed, if you don't have the ability to communicate with them because you're not hearing back from your processor on where things are, you know, you've got to take a good, hard look at where you're at and fix that because the reality of it is is if you start developing and creating these referral partnerships or on the reverse of that if you start targeting consumers directly and you start getting loans from it and, and either one starts to produce the results and you can't handle the loan side of it or the loan side of it tends to falter uh, because of processing or because of communication or whatever the case may be what you're doing is you're starting from scratch every single time out of the box and that's not a good place to be you're not going to create a, a recession proof mortgage business by doing that 
you've got to be able to, to do those loans in an, in an efficient manner. And so I'm looking at who's on the call with me today, and I believe that everybody on the call with me, and feel free to come in. This is masterminding today, and I, you know, let's have conversations. But I believe everybody on the call with me today has those good processes in place. And that's good because now we can focus as a group on how to get more agents to refer us. How do we get more consumers directly to our squeeze pages and things like that? How, how do we get more of these loans and referrals? Now, we have over the last few weeks been focused on presentations, but our focus has been on the referral partner side of it. And not this, this week we are still focusing on the referral side of it, and the next week we're gonna dive into the consumer direct presentations and how to how to do those efficiently and market those efficiently a lot of the promoting of your of your presentations whether it's realtor or consumer direct is going to be a lot of similar things but it's it's important to note the differences so this week we're really focused on the realtor side of things and that being said it's important to remember that that what you're the things that you have access to already are things that can help real estate agents and it's not so much about what you're teaching or presenting it's about how you engage with the people when you're doing your presentation it can be a very simple thing that you're presenting something even excuse me I'm sorry I had to wet the whistle there Something even as simple as how to create a Facebook fan page can be what you present, but it's about how you engage the crowd in that presentation or the people who are there and what you do in follow-up that's going to make the difference on whether or not it produces loans for you. Because, again, even doing presentations, that's not the thing that's going to produce the loans. That gives you that opportunity to get face-to-face -face and to follow up with those people and get that opportunity to develop a relationship. That's where you're going to develop those loans. And I see a question just popped in, so let me pop open this box real quick. I don't want to, I don't want to hog up all of the floor time today on our open discussion. Um, Bill, good to see you, my friend. I will be meeting with an agent who asked about monetizing Facebook. How do I start to explain the process? Any prior webinars? Um, absolutely, lots of prior webinars. Um, let me go to our member page here real quick, and I will walk you through it. Now, guys, on a side note, um, Chris spent the better part of last week going through and organizing and getting all the classes in under categories and separating and getting what we're trying to do is make this daily mastermind archive we realized that it got a little bit you know with this we're doing classes <laughs> four times a week that have great content and we want to make sure you got access to all of them and we know this is a little bit hard to find what you're looking for right this is a little bit difficult to find what you're looking for and we understand that. So what Chris has been doing is on the back side, and, and for now, you know, this is what the website looks like for now, but we are in the process of organizing. Um, Chris has got them all categorized and all the classes uncategorized, you know, under the right categories. It's just a matter of going through now and then make, making the page look right so it's easily navigable for you guys. So bear in mind when we do this again you know in the next few days hopefully by the end of this week we'll be able to show you the new site and how to navigate that so keep that in mind for now um, that that's what's that's the direction we're going um, Facebook ads decoded that's more about Facebook ads I would get into okay so Bill when you go into the daily mastermind classes in the yellow buttons Scroll down to the second set of Facebook classes. The second set of Facebook classes is called Facebook Marketing, Facebook Marketing Part 2. I can't remember exactly which one of those two classes it was it is, and I think I go through the, the theory the, the conversation about it in both of them. 
but both of those classes talk about having that specific Facebook formula. The, it talks about the importance of engagement and how important it is to engage the people that you become friends with, not only in terms of posting stuff that they will like and they will comment on, but always constantly be posting and liking and, and, and sharing their material too. You become an actual friend on Facebook and, and it gives a feeling of real true friendship on Facebook and then in that class we also go into what I call the Facebook formula for success which is it talks about the the daily tens where we went into depth on how to create lists of let's say for a realtor for instance it would be a list of past clients um, or a list of prospects that they're friends with on Facebook and they filter them out and then they go to a news feed and see only a news feed of those people that they really need to do this level of engagement with to encourage them to refer them to their friends, family, and coworkers, or to encourage them to finish the deal, buy the home, or continue to work with that agent. It's all about engagement, though. And so I show you a way to kind of create a list of the people that you need to engage with and then look at a news feed of just those people and then follow a formula of you, you've got what I call the daily tens, which means you're going to post, comment, like, or share on ten different things that are within that, that list each day. Each day you've got to make it a point to do ten engagements um, with your list. And, and what I recommend is if you've got two different lists, well, that means you've got 20 engagements because this list gets ten, this list gets ten. If you've got three lists and so on and so on. Um, the other part of it is it, it shows a specific formula on how, how and what you post as a real estate agent or a loan officer, what you personally would post on each day of the week to create engagement on your own stuff to brand you as an expert. And it goes kind of like this, Monday is always a motivational statement, something to get your week kicked off motivational. Tuesday, I like to do something funny, you know, post something funny on Tuesday, get them laughing, things like that. Um, Wednesday is what we call an industry-specific post where you get to post something about the industry, you know, something that's going on in the housing market, what current rates are, just something specific about your industry. And for real estate agents, that could be things like a listing or, you know, how, how home prices have... have what home prices are doing in your market area, things like that. Thursday is what we call an engagement post day, and an engagement post means Thursday is the highest engagement day according to Facebook, so you want to post like a question of the day or a fill-in-the-blank statement, things like that, things that generate that engagement, that get people to comment, like, or share what you've posted. And then Friday, um, Friday is what we call your... Uh, that's kind of, uh, I don't know how to call it, I call it a superhero day where you can either post a testimonial or a superhero story where you've been able to save, you've swooped in like Superman and saved the day when all hope seemed lost. So Friday is your day where you get the, testimonials are always great, but if you don't have one, you can post your own story. Yeah, um, Bill's follow-up question is, so you segment the prospects within your friends list. Yeah, so what that, that I, I believe it's on Facebook Marketing Part 1 that shows exactly how to do that, but you go in and you create these lists from your friends list. So let's say I've got 500 friends in my friends list, but only 180 of them are my past clients. I'll go in and create a list of those 180 past clients, and then I can actually filter my news feed to only show those let me, let me dive into that and show you what I'm talking about here. So let me go to my home page real quick. And so on your home page, you've got this area scrolling eventually. So you've got this area called friends. Now if I let me go to my more button here under friends, what this does is it brings up all my different lists. And let's say I want to create a new list called past clients. So I would go to create list, and the name of this one's going to be past clients. 
Okay, and who goes on this list? So I would start typing in names of people to add to this list, like um, like Bill Rogers is on my past client list. Alan is on my past client list. Okay, and then I can create that list. And if I don't remember who who else is on my list or supposed to be on that list. Can't remember if I get to it from here or if I have to go back. Okay, perfect. So now I can click on see all friends or I can go to my past client list here where the cog is, add to favorites or delete list so I can add that to the favorites. But if I see all friends, so now I've got all my friends here and let's say I notice that um, let me find somebody here that I can quickly. Let's say I notice that Jeffrey is part of my, oh, that's one of my past clients. I can click here, and I can add to another list, and I can simply scroll down. Where is my, there it is, and add to my past client's list. So notice he's now on two lists. He's on my friends list, my past client list, my MMA friends. He's on multiple lists, okay? But now if I want to, once I've created that list, I can come into my friends after my list is done, where my friends are here. Oh, come on, Facebook, stop messing with me. And if I hover over this, I've got more. When I click on more, this shows me all my different lists. So if I want to see what's going on on my newsfeed of just my past clients, I click on past clients. And now I'm looking at a newsfeed of just my past clients and what they've posted. Right, so now that's all I have to do, and now I can just do my daily tens from this view instead of having to find them from the main home view. I may have to search forever to go through and find them posting something. I may have to continuously search until I find one of my past clients in here, but if I come into my list and I go straight to that list, you know. Where did it go? Past client. Oh, it's at the top. That's right. And past client. Now I'm just looking at a view of just those people that are on that list. And it's easier for me to easily engage and then move about my day. There's no reason. What I show you in this class is a way, and these two classes combined, is how to manage your Facebook and really generate revenue, generate engagement, and get people to do business with you on Facebook or from Facebook. I spend in about 30 minutes to an hour a day on Facebook. It's really not something that you're going to spend a lot of time. Bill, that's the way I would start out with them is showing them, take those two classes, turn them into your own, start presenting that stuff to them. Because that's the, that's the first thing that anybody should know about Facebook marketing is, is what it takes to actually generate business. And, and it's realistically, you listen to any Facebook guru out there. I don't care who they are. You listen to any Facebook guru out there, and they will tell you that you can use lots of different tools to attract people to you. To actually do business on Facebook, it requires engagement. It requires creating and developing engagement with your fans and followers. That's how you do business on Facebook, and that's what those two classes show you. I hope that helps you, my man. Great question, by the way. And, and the way that, uh, Bill, I'd recommend that you do it, I understand that it's a meeting with an agent, but I would take a presentation to them. Even if you just print it out and, and thumb through it or have it on your computer and pop it open and just kind of go through it right there in front of them in a one-on-one, -on -one, having that presentation, it paints a picture that, number one, Bill, you were prepared for the meeting. You heard what, the, what they had asked you when you were on the phone setting that meeting that they want to know, asked about monetizing Facebook, and that you prepared a little something to show them how to begin monetizing Facebook. And you're, you've got that, you, you, know, you wanted to provide them with the most amount of value for this opportunity to meet with them, and here you go, I'm prepared for you. It also brands you as somebody that knows more than what they know about it. It brands you as an expert, right? And so you've, got, you're, you've kind of crossed two bridges with one stone. 
by having a presentation, depending on how it goes, it's gonna, if, if this is an initial meeting, somebody you've not met with before, it's going to break the ice a little bit for you. It's going to ease some of that tension, that apprehension that you may feel or they may feel when you first get together with them. So you'll kind of break that tension by giving them something cool. And having a presentation makes it so that you don't have those awkward silences in the, in the conversation. So it's a great thing to do. But remember, even though you've got that cool presentation, take that five or, or so minutes beforehand and do what you normally would do, Bill. I, you know, I've talked to you several times. You're a personable. You're you're a guy that's, you know, personable guy. A lot of knowledge in that brain of yours. You've got a lot of experience in your life. And when you meet somebody, I I see it happening. You meet some. Hey, good to meet you. And and you 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 start to ask about them. If it was somebody you met at church or met while you were out walking your dog down by the lake and throwing the tennis ball, you would. Hey, how are you? I'm Bill. Good to meet you. Tell me, so are you, you know, where do you live? Where are you from? Are you from around here? Great. Are you married? You got kids. What do you do for a living? Now you already know what they do for a living, so you just change that up to how did you get in the real estate business? Great. And what's your, you know, what's your business dream? Are you looking to sell 5,000 homes in the next two years and, and retire, or you want to be in this for life? Are you a lifer? You know, ask them about them. Get to know them. And if it's a little bit awkward, you've simply got some new facts on them, and now you dive into your presentation. Uh, when you have segmented your list and you click on the person's name, does it take you to their timeline? Absolutely. So if you notice, I'm on my segmented list here. I'm, I'm looking at let me scroll up the Facebook. Okay, I'm looking at my segmented list, so I'm, I'm on Facebook as me, but I'm in my past clients custom list. And so I've got all my people here, and as I scroll down, oh, oh let me go see what Alan's up to. I can click Alan's name, and that's going to take me right to his personal profile. Now, if I hit home again, that's taking me back to my regular home page, but from here, I can go back to my past client list for sure. And then let's say I want to see I think I only put two people on this list. So let's say I want to go to Jeffrey now, so I'll click on Jeffrey's name, and that takes me over to Jeffrey's page. And now I'm seeing what's going on there. So absolutely it does. It absolutely does. It's a great way to manage Facebook without having to be cluttered with all the stuff that's in your, that's in your regular news feed. Because the reality of it is, I've got 600 and some odd friends in my friends list. Yeah, 698 on my friends list. And my regular news feed, even though I'm only seeing about 50 to 70 of those friends on a regular basis, and by the way, Alan, thank you for turning me on to this John Loomer guy, man. Great, great stuff from him. I, I, I check his stuff out. I'm I'm follower on his blog now, so I get updated when he updates it. Thank you for turning me on to that, though, Alan. He's, he, that guy's got some good, good insight. I've uh, tweaked some of the things he's taught before because I, I disagree sometimes with what he says, but um, I also think the guy is a genius, and, and, and you know he really can let you know what you've got going on. Um, but now notice that, that my news feed is now congested with business page posts, regular people posts, um, sponsored story posts, and everything in between. So it can be it can be daunting. I mean, that's how people get stuck on Facebook, by the way, is when they go to their news feed and they catch a story that Allison's mom was in town. Oh, let me let me check out their Christmas pictures. You know, or oh, he's something on the infusion stuff. I don't know about Thrive yet. Let me check this out. And things like that. That's how you get. That's how you get into the, what they call the Facebook lock. <laughs> to avoid it, create the little friends lists. It, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to create the friends list. You could actually spend the time and go through your entire friends list, and and just you know assign everybody to the different groups that you want to assign them to in one fell swoop. Yeah, it might take you an hour or two to do so, but once you've done that, you now have a lot of really easy ways to manage and, and, and work Facebook as opposed to allow getting stuck in Facebook or Facebook being one of those things that you kind of, oh, I'd love, wish I knew how to do it, but I can't really, I don't really know how to do it.
you know, that kind of thing. It's easy to get stuck in Facebook, though. Very easy. Um, where was I? Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. So Facebook marketing and the Facebook marketing two on here, Bill. That's gonna be that's gonna be what you need. Uh, yes, your post on a rate on a segmented list absolutely appears on your timeline. It absolutely appears on your regular timeline. That segmented list, Bill, all that's doing is it's filtering out your news feed. That's only filtering out your news feed. The rest of the regular functionality of Facebook still works. So when I post something, it can show up on my timeline if I want it to, but based on settings, I don't really... If I like somebody's stuff, I want everybody else to see that anyway. If I post something on somebody's wall, I want others to see that anyway. I want them people in general to see that I'm engaging. So you're not changing anything in terms of posting something and it shows up on your timeline, their timeline, any of that stuff. All you're doing is you're making it easier to navigate Facebook. You're taking away all of the clutter and only focusing on, let me see if I've got a list with, with more people in it. Um, yeah, so here's a list with more people in it. And so now I've taken all of the fan pages, I've taken away all of the promoted posts, I've taken away all of the, the you know, just the, the stuff from, from the just from all of the general public, and I am now focusing solely on the, the 14 people on this list. What are, they, what are they doing today? What's going on on their pages? So I can focus my, my marketing efforts and my likes and my messages and my shares and everything else. I can focus on just the people that I want to, but everything that I do here is the same as if I were on the regular old news feed. All I've done is I've filtered my view to take away the clutter. Notice I don't have ads on the side here. I don't have any business pages saying like my page or any of that other stuff, right? I don't have any of that stuff going on. I'm seeing what Lisa's posting. I'm checking out what James posted. I'm seeing what you you know what you guys are doing on Facebook, but it's only because I filtered it. I've taken away all the clutter, and I can now focus on on what it is that I'm looking to focus on. Make sense? Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely, and, I, and I'm excited that you're, you're going to start doing these presentations. Now, the two presentations that I, that I told you to go check out and, and you know, use those, the Facebook Marketing and Facebook Marketing Part 2, those were not put together as done for you. So let me just show you an example of what I'm talking about here, just so you know what, you, what you're going to need to do when you get them. So the Facebook marketing, the first PowerPoint. This PowerPoint I did it as you know for you guys. So it's got the the Mortgage Mastermind Group logos top and bottom on the PowerPoint. It's not set up as how you're gonna. And this is kind of going through the list. So here's what you're gonna need to do, Bill, when you get this and you want to make it your own. Start by going to the Design button, and then go to Format Background. That's going to bring up this page. What you're going to do is click on Solid Fill, drop down the paper and go white or give it a darker background and then apply to all. And notice it just took away, when I click that apply to all over here, it took those logos and everything off of there. Okay, so you want to make sure you do that. You you know you, you if you want to show them our logo, we're more than happy to to, <laughs> to share with you. 
but make sure you just go in there and go into that design center, go to solid fill and change the background to white or a solid color. Or if you've got an image background that you want to use, you could, you're feel free to use that one, but change that background up. When you apply to all, it'll take it onto every page. You don't have to do it for each individual page, just that first page. And then apply to all and you're good to go. I missed how you showed us how to drop a name into a list. Can you show us that real quick? Absolutely. So the easiest way, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, let's see. If I want to add somebody to a list that I'm already in, notice I've got, I, I've got this little section over here that I can either type in a name. If there's somebody I want to add to a, a, a list here, I can, I can type in a name. Um, So if I want to add my brother, I can, I can you know, type in a name and add him to a list, but like that, I've got suggestions here. So from my suggestions, I can simply look at the suggestions that they're giving me based on the suggestions. Okay, I want to add George. Boom, I add George. Right? So I can do it from here as well. Doesn't show me all my people though. These are only suggestions. Um, and then manage list. Yep, on this list. Nope, that's not it. Can't do it from that. Can't do it from that. Um, so the other way that you can do it is from friends right here. You go to more. You've got your button up at the top that says see all friends. So you click that. That's going to take you into your friends list. And then from here, all of your friends already have a designation. By default, they get added as friends, a, an automatic list that Facebook creates for you. But if you want to add them to a different list or change the list that they are on, you would simply click the button, add to another list, and find the list that you want to add them to. Right, and so now I've got her on both lists. She's now she's a friends, and she's an MMA friend. So she's added to both lists. Right, I want to add her to a new list, so I add to another list, and I add her to that other list. Right, oops, didn't mean to click Joe's name there. So that's it. You just kind of click through. You can also go to your own profile and go to your friends list in your profile that gives you the exact same view that I was just on and you can go through here and you can do the same exact thing just as you scroll through you see one you want to add to your list boom you drop them down add to another list select the list you want to add them to or take them away from and boom they're on there that's it Absolutely, my friend. I'll tell you, if you're not using lists on Facebook, you need to be. It really, really does help with how to, to stay focused. Um, don't know the rest of them. All right. So it helps you stay focused on what you've got going on. It takes away the clutter of your home page. Um, and, and quite frankly, Bill, that's a great thing to be able to show to your, uh, to your referral partners because I promise you they don't know how to do lists. Very few know how to create those kind of lists. I, is anybody on the call participate in the Elf on a Shelf thingy? Is it me? Maybe it's just me. I got to say it creeps me out a little bit. Oh, you do? Okay. I don't know. Maybe may I just don't have kids little enough to get it. Maybe that's what it is. Because man, I'm a little creeped out by the little elf on the shelf. I you know pooping around, rummaging around my house. Good clean fun for the kids, I suppose. Good clean fun for the kids, I suppose.
All right, that's all the questions I've got in the box, guys. We've covered them. Um, so let's go back to my little list here. So presentations, where, how, when. Um, I highly recommend, you know, like, so Bill, are you meeting this guy at his office? Or are you meeting this guy at, or girl um, at a coffee? Or are you buying him lunch? What, what's, your, what's your presentation? What, what do you have against, up against you with this, uh, this realtor meeting? Oh, and by the way, Peggy, is it this week that your appreciation breakfast is? Is that coming up this week? Friday. Awesome. Okay, so Bill, Bill's answer is Friday also. So you both answered Friday. That's awesome. Um, Peggy, one thing I want to – been calling for RSVPs. Perfect. Uh, one thing to, to make sure, you know, have a pre-planned toast, so to speak, kind of, you know, do a toast, and whether it be a mimosa toast or something, just have a pre-planned, pre-written, know what you're going to say kind of a toast to kind of, you, you want to address everyone, but you want to make sure that they all understand that what they've meant to your business. So kind of do a toast to the group about, you know, hey, this is, I, I gathered you all here because I want to tell you how much I appreciate and, and love each and every one of you and give you, give you all each a personal thank you. And I brought you all together to, to share a meal because I believe that sharing a meal uh, creates a feeling within each and every one of it at least gives me the feeling that that we've you know we've celebrated something together by sharing a meal or you know and it, it brings me back to you know how how entire golly I don't even know what I'm trying to say here I would I, entire castles and entire lands were brought together over sharing meals. I mean, think about how Thanksgiving has changed this country, and so I wanted to share that opportunity with you. Something, something that lets them know, but have a nice toast ready to go, and obviously, like what I just did, I, you know, trying to wing it and not having it prepared, it didn't sound very good, so I would definitely sit down and kind of write out your thoughts and prepare a little bit of a toast. It doesn't have to be a long thing, just something that you know what you're going to say to give them thanks for being there. Um, Bill, on Friday, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for you to kind of present some things, and you've got an opportunity to prepare yourself very well, so I would highly recommend get that presentation, even if it's just, you know, something that you hand to them and say, hey, I just wanted to kind of go through some of this with you, and I even brought this for you to give to you, so if you, you know, if you want to refer back to it later, and thumb, flip through it. I promise you, you'll impress them just with that because you're showing up to that meeting prepared. You're showing up to that presentation, or you know, you, you you're showing up prepared, which is something that I bet you very few of the other ap appointments that they went to were prepared with something for the real estate agent. Most of the time, they're probably prepared, but they're prepared with their current rate sheet or <laughs> something to that effect. Um, where you do your presentation, like one-on-ones, you can pretty much do those anywhere and, and get the privacy you need, but large group presentations really want to make sure that you've segmented yourself or you're, you're away from the general crowd of, of a restaurant or something like that. Restaurants are great places to do it, but get some sort of not privacy. You don't need to have a full-on private room, but you, you need something that separates where you guys are from the rest of the restaurant, even if it's just like a table that's empty between you and the rest of the restaurant or a partition or you know one of them Asian folding walls, uh, something like that to separate where you guys are because that will give them a sense that they're in a, in a, in a meeting environment. Um, Without that separation wall, that feeling doesn't get created. They feel like they're just in an open air space, um, and and that you know that comes from my own experience being you know back in the day when I was selling POS systems and I was part of a BNI group doing that. Um, you, typically, with those, we were just in a large table in the middle of the restaurant with this networking group that I was with, and you just never had that feeling of exclusivity or privateness or that you were part of it, it was just you were with everybody else you just getting together for lunch and when people would do their presentation you know they'd get five minutes to talk about the product and it would just be 
it just never went over the way it, it could have gone over with other groups that I were part of that had a, a private room or we met at a time at the restaurant was closed and so it was just you guys. That always gave you that feeling of exclusivity and that feeling that you guys were, you know, it, it was part, you were, you were part of something that was helping your business as opposed to, man, I'm just having lunch and this is kind of wasting my time a little bit. And you want to create that feeling with your people too when you're doing those presentations. So where does have a little bit of importance. Now again, you can do it anywhere if you've got that ability to separate that out. When you do it, it is, is also key. You know, I, I've seen people that didn't know their market area well enough, unfortunately, and they tried to do, they, they decided they were going to do presentations every other Tuesday and they set up a whole bunch of them and they started noticing, man, they were only getting like one agent here and nobody at the next one and, and it just never was taken off. And it's not uncommon for your first couple to not have anybody there. But as you start to do more and more, more people show up, but they were never having anybody show up, turns out. Broker opens were on Tuesday every week. They were doing real realtor caravans on Tuesdays, or they were doing you know they were having realtor meetings in the mornings, and then all the realtors were you know most of the brokerages got together and said Tuesday mornings was when we're going to have our meetings, get our teams ready to go. So they were they were I hate to use the term pissing in the wind because nobody was showing up because they had something already prearranged that was important to their business and, and the, the person doing the presenting didn't take that into consideration. So your win, you've definitely got to take that into consideration based on your market area. What goes on in your market? Are the agents available on Tuesdays? Is Wednesday a better day? Is Thursday a better day? What are the days in your market area where the agents aren't running around and doing things for their business that they, that they feel like they need to do? That's the day you want to do yours. Um, what else was there? What do I got on my list? I can't see my list right now. I got something in front of it. Um, follow up on your presentations. That is absolutely hands down the key to success. I can't talk on that enough that the follow up part, the process, the plan that you have in place that that's where the money is going to be made. So if you don't have that part in place, stop right now what you're doing. Don't make your pre don't finish your presentation. Stop where you're at right now and get the follow-up part of the plan uh, of the presentation strategy. Get that follow-up plan in place exactly what you're going to do, what you're going to send them in an email, what you're going to send them in the direct mail what you're going to say when you call them, how often are you going to call them, and how you're going to track it. Get all that set up right now today before you even go another bit further. Don't even look at presentations yet. Get that follow-up plan, that follow-up process in place. Have your tracking sheet ready to go because the reality of it is, is that's what's going to make you money. The presentation itself is the fluff. That's what got you in the door. What's going to sell you the TV is the, is the actual relationship. So you've got to have that follow-up plan to get to that relationship part. You've got to follow up on your prospects because that's what you're doing when you're doing presenting is you're develop, you're creating prospects. But you've now got to convert those prospects into closed deals, and the only way to do that is with a good follow-up plan. Excuse me. And what else we got? Um, what do you have to present? And we kind of touched a little bit on that with Bill just a little bit ago. And that I wrote that down because I wanted to. I wanted to take the time right now, or whenever we had the opportunity, to let you guys know that we have or are in the process of revamping the site, make it a little bit more user friendly, a little bit easier to navigate to the things that you'd like to have, but let's kind of go through the list for common traits. That's not a great one to present to real estate agents, but the playbook, having a, having a time block and being able to, to manage your day in a way that you can get accomplish more, that's a great class to present to real estate agents. The 30-second elevator speak, that's a fantastic class to present to real estate agents. SEO knowledge, again, another great class to present yourself as an expert to real estate agents. YouTube SEO for Google results, 
another great way to show real estate agents that you're an expert on something. So of the first five classes, four of them are classes that you can take, convert, and make into a presentation. Video Marketing Basics, another one, great for real estate agents. Emailing with a purpose, great for real estate agents. The class itself and the presentation has scripts in it that are specific to you, the loan officer, so if you are going to use that one, you're going to have some editing to do on that one. That one's not so much a done for you. Um, sharing ideas, Consumer Direct, that's for you guys. Facebook Ads, that's all you guys. Realtor Needs Assessment. Uh, that's a no-brainer. That's not a presentation to realtors, but that's a face-to-face -face meeting that you can really go deep with a real estate agent. Great to, to bring to your one-on-ones. That realtor needs assessment is your best friend at a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay? Stay on target, not for agents. Fire at the target, not for agents. Ma mapping out, crafting content. Crafting your content may be a good one for the agents as well if they're going to get into like blogging or um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, doing things that are consumer direct marketing related, that's a good one. Um, again, another time blocking, scripts for any occasion, not so much. Facebook marketing and Facebook marketing too, awesome for real estate agents. The scraper tool class is no longer, it no longer works, so we can disregard that class. Um, presentations to agents, part one, presentations to agents, part two. Tools, ideas, and strategies. Um, I believe this presentation's part two. The part three of this under the top producer class, because this was Wednesday, this was Thursday. The part three of this was a Friday class, and it's under the top producer interview um, section, the top producer archive. That's actually a done for you how to use Facebook to create a fan page for each listing. So that has a done for you class in it as well. Um, business to business marketing, any agent could, you could absolutely do well with that. Fizbo's no brainer for real estate agents. Just don't get into the marketing tools because those are specific to the loan officer. Um, LinkedIn basics and LinkedIn groups, you could absolutely teach your agents about LinkedIn. Um, Facebook custom audiences doesn't. Uh, Facebook custom audience changes. If, you're a, if you think your agents have done custom audience, it's not so much a good one for your agents. Follow-up formula is a great one for your agents. Use your social profiles for SEO is a fantastic class for your real estate agents. Belly-to-belly, uh, -belly, that's more about you guys. Facebook tar retargeting parts one and two, awesome class for your real estate agents. Really great class for your real estate agents. Same thing with Facebook retargeting part three. That's kind of the final step. So you've got, you've got three months worth of classes just right there. Okay. Um, reviews are important too. Great class for your real estate agents. Um, seven ways to generate mortgage leads, not so much. <laughs> um, marketing to referral partners, that's about the agents. Holiday marketing ideas, great class to give to your real estate agents if it's not too late, if you're going to do that in this month. Do it yourself is an awesome class. This is one that Alan would probably, I, 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 if he hasn't already, because he uses PowerPoint a lot, because that's what that class is about, is how to use PowerPoint to make everything you want to make. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's, we've just covered all of the classes. And guys, probably of all these different classes that we just went through, there's probably 20 or 30 of them that are classes that you can take, turn around, and that becomes your presentation to your agents. So there are lots there. Now, over the next two days, we're going to be talking specifically on Wednesday about how do you promote the actual presentation? How do you get butts in the seat? How do you get people there? Get them to show up. So we're going to talk about how you do that. How do you get the agents to show up? What do you say? Do you do, what do you say in your videos? How do you get partners to help you fill the seats? That's a big one. <laughs> I love it, Alan. Alan says, I was in PowerPoint creating a card when you were talking about me using PowerPoint. <laughs> I love it, bro. I love it. So Wednesday, we're going to talk about promoting the actual classes by, for yourself as well as with partners. And then Thursday, we're going to talk about how do you plan the actual event. 
how do you get everything planned and organized. So we're going to go into that this week. Guys, girls, that is it for today. I appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out of your day to hang out with me. I am serious as I can be that today is Monday. Monday is Opportunity Day. Opportunity to start your entire week, to make something big happen this week. Today is an opportunity. Get out there and get it, y'all. I mean, that's what you get. It's Monday. It's an opportunity. Get out there and get it. And Jim, we're just ending up class, and I'm glad you came at the last minute because I want you, you, you're, you're kind of the reason I wanted to show what we got going on on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, we're going to be talking about promoting the class and how to promote it yourself as well as with partners to help you get butts in the seat. And then Thursday, we're going to talk about exact, how do you plan the, the event itself. How do you get everything ready and organized so that when you show up, it just happens and, and everything goes smoothly. So that's what we're going to be talking about Wednesday and Thursday. Um, today, we had some great questions about using Facebook lists. Um, Bill is going to be doing some presenting this year. And he's already got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity on Friday where the person is asking him, how do I monetize Facebook? So we dove in and we talked about you know, different classes that he could show them. Specifically, we talked about the Facebook marketing and Facebook marketing part two that covered how do you use lists and break your, you know, separate your friends into separated lists so you can focus your efforts. That's what he's going to show that real estate agent and you know, present them with engagement type stuff off the bat to get them started on how do you monetize Facebook. So it's about opportunities. We talked about the when, the where, you know, kind of recapping what we did on with presentations last week. I made it very I made it a point to get on my soapbox, as you know I tend to do, Jim, and talk about uh, the follow-up plan for your for your presentations and the fact that if you don't have that in place, stop what you're doing now and get that set up first. That is the most important part. So that's kind of the gist of where we were at with class today. And uh, I I'm basically was saying thank you again for joining me, guys. We're, we're going to cover is promoting on Wednesday, planning on Thursday. Um, Friday, I am working on an interview now. I have not put it, I don't have it solidified yet. I, I've had a conversation, but we didn't put it in stone, so I don't have it confirmed just yet. I am working on an interview from Friday. If I don't have an interview from Friday, I've got a great, I'm going to do another done for you presentation that you can take out to your real estate agent partners. And then next week, we're going to start focusing on consumer direct presentations and that entire strategy because they are a little bit different strategies. There's a lot of similarities to presenting to partners and agents, but there's also a lot of differences and we're going to cover those. So guys, girls, that is it for me today. I hope you learned a little something. I appreciate each and every one of you hanging out with me and I will see you right back here same time, same channel on Wednesday. Have a great day everybody and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye now.